A few days ago, news broke about two people supposedly communicating through dreams, but is this true? To what extent were they able to do it? How advanced are we in this technology? Let's analyze how far we've come in understanding dreams and whether we'll soon be able to manipulate them. Dreams have been a mystery to humanity for centuries. From ancient civilizations to modern psychological research, dreams have been interpreted as windows into our unconscious, sometimes as premonitions, or simply as manifestations of the mind while we sleep. Now, the possibility of entering dreams and using technology to record or manipulate them has been a fascinating topic in science fiction and, increasingly, in contemporary science. But why isn't it so easy to do? Is it because we still don't fully understand the brain? Well, yes, partly. But there are other problems. To explore the possibility of entering dreams, it's first essential to understand how they work. Sleep is divided into several phases. Light sleep, deep sleep, and REM, rapid eye movement sleep. It's in the REM phase where vivid dreams occur most frequently. Advances in brain monitoring technology such as electroencephalography and functional magnetic resonance imaging (fMRI) have allowed scientists to study these phases in detail and observe how different brain regions activate during dreams. In 2013, a study conducted at Kyoto University in Japan, led by Dr. Yugiyoshi Kamitani, used functional neuroimaging and electroencephalography to study brain activity during sleep. They scanned the brains of three people and woke them up whenever they detected waves associated with the onset of sleep, asking them to describe their dreams. This process was repeated several times, obtaining about 200 dream reports. Most dreams reflected everyday experiences, but some included unusual elements. The researchers identified 20 common categories in dreams, such as man and car, and scanned participants while they viewed images of these categories. They compared the brain activity recorded while viewing these images with the activity prior to waking the subjects. They analyzed brain areas involved in early visual processing, which can be marked as B1, B2, and B3, and other higher visual processing regions. Previous studies had been able to decode brain activity to reconstruct viewed images, but in this new study, participants were repeatedly awakened at different times during REM sleep and asked to describe their dreams. The research showed that it was possible to predict dream content with 80% accuracy and that the brain's visual areas also activate during dreams. But beyond just recording dreams, some scientists have also tried to manipulate them. Novel techniques such as transcranial direct current stimulation TDCS, have been tested for this purpose. In 2014, a study led by Dr. Ursula Voss at the University of Frankfurt used TDCS to induce lucid dream states in patients. Lucid dreams are those in which the dreamer is aware they are dreaming and, in some cases, can control the dream's content. Dr. Voss and her team used the transcranial electrical stimulation method. This non-invasive technique involves applying very weak electrical currents to the scalp to influence brainwave activity. The stimulation was specifically applied during REM sleep, which is the phase when most vivid dreams occur. While participants were in that stage, scientists applied electrical current in the gamma wave range, between 25 to 40 hertz, to their heads. The goal was to increase activity in the gamma wave range, which is a type of brain wave associated with conscious thinking and perception in the waking brain. The results were surprising. Participants who received this stimulation reported having lucid dreams more frequently than those who didn't receive stimulation. Additionally, in their dreams, they were able to recognize they were dreaming, and in some cases could influence what happened in their dreams. This confirmed that gamma range stimulation was effective in inducing lucid dreams. This study was significant because it demonstrated that it's possible to modify brain activity during sleep to influence dreams. Beyond the TDCS method, other methods for influencing dreams have been explored. One example is auditory and olfactory stimulation during REM sleep. A few years ago, researchers at the University of Freiburg in Germany used specific sounds and smells to influence participants' dreams. For example, when exposing participants to a rose scent, the likelihood of them dreaming about flowers increased. This approach suggests that by integrating external stimuli, it's possible to alter or at least influence dream content non-invasively. In the last decade, research on lucid dream manipulation has advanced significantly. A key area of progress is the use of wearable devices like Dormio, developed at MIT. 
Its goal is to intervene in the hypnagogic phase, which is the transition state between wakefulness and sleep. In this phase, people are still conscious, which allows interaction with their thoughts and guidance of their dream content. The device is worn on the hand and is connected to an app that monitors physiological signals such as heart rate and movement levels to detect when a person is entering the hypnagogic phase. Once in this phase, Dormio plays specific auditory stimuli, such as pre-recorded words or sounds, to influence dream content. For example, if the word tree is played, the person is likely to dream about trees or nature-related scenarios. Dormio allows real-time interaction with dreams. The device has an app that monitors sleep activity and adjusts stimuli to maximize the probability that dream content aligns with desired themes. During their study, scientists briefly woke people after the hypnagogic phase and could ask them what they were dreaming about, which allowed for detailed recording of their experience and the effectiveness of the stimulus. The therapeutic potential is encouraging. It could be used to treat trauma or nightmares by guiding dreams toward positive or neutral experiences. It can also be a very useful tool for stimulating creativity, as hypnagogic dreams tend to be vivid and surreal, offering new perspectives for artists and creators. This is where we stand regarding dream manipulation, and what about recording dreams? While significant advances have been made in dream decoding, the possibility of recording them presents major challenges. Recording a dream is extremely difficult due to the complexity and variability of brain activity during sleep. To start with, during sleep, especially in REM phase when the most vivid dreams occur, the brain areas that activate are not the same as during wakefulness. For example, the visual and auditory regions of the brain don't process information in the same way, which makes it difficult to map and reconstruct these experiences. Brain activity in dreams is more disorganized and less coherent, which complicates accurate interpretation of signals. The only available technology that comes close to being able to do something like this is functional magnetic resonance imaging, or fMRI, and there's no way it can show what you're dreaming in the form of images. This technology can only capture images of brain activity, but this might not even be the best way to somehow record dreams because it interferes with the detection of subtle signals related to the visual or auditory experiences of dreams. Aside from being bulky devices that are impractical for continuous monitoring without disturbing the subject. Another issue to consider is that not all brains function the same way, and dream experiences vary widely among people. This variability complicates the development of universal models that can accurately translate brain signals into specific images or sounds. Even if we use artificial intelligence algorithms, these require consistent and clear data to be effective, and sleep signals are anything but uniform. In the future, it will most likely be possible, but for now, artificial intelligence algorithms that have advanced in decoding images seen while awake cannot fully adapt to dream signals due to the variability mentioned earlier. Building a robust and accurate model for recording dreams is hindered by the differences between sleep and wake states. So until more advanced technologies are developed to capture these signals accurately and without interference, the goal of recording dreams with high fidelity will remain a significant technological challenge. And although some studies have managed to correlate certain brain signals with images seen in the waking state, translating that technology to decode complete dreams is much more difficult. Dreams involve a combination of images, sounds, and emotions that interact in complex and often surreal ways, which goes beyond the capabilities of current models. Beyond technical challenges, there are important ethical considerations surrounding dream recording and manipulation. Our dreams are deeply personal experiences and often contain intimate and private aspects of our psyche. The use of technologies that can record and reproduce dreams raises serious questions about mental privacy and consent. If devices that can access a person's dreams without their consent are developed in the future, it would generate significant debate about the boundaries of privacy and mind invasion. Now, what about this news about two people who were able to communicate through dreams? The company RemSpace reported a few weeks ago that their researchers induced lucid dreams in two participants and had them exchange a simple message using specially designed equipment. As we've seen earlier, inducing lucid dreams in a laboratory setting is possible. According to the company, Participants in their homes were monitored through a remote device that tracked brain activity. The first participant transmitted a message while dreaming, 
and eight minutes later, the second participant received the message in their own lucid dream and confirmed it upon waking, thus achieving the first dream conversation. Additionally, the company reported that two other people managed to communicate with the server through lucid dreams. Is this enough to confirm that people could communicate between dreams? Not yet. While the claim appears to be real, it's still in its early stages and requires more scientific validation. The research hasn't been peer-reviewed. Moreover, while the process was successful in transmitting simple messages, it was very basic communication, far from being a fluid, real-time conversation. The technology they used is known as Remio and was specifically designed to decode sounds produced during dreams using facial electromyography. While this is a significant advance in the field of neurotechnology and lucid dreams, there's still a long way to go to achieve complex and continuous real-time interaction during sleep. This technology could transform how we understand communication and dreams. It could open new fields not only in research but also in medicine. At a commercial level, some even say that RM sleep and lucid dreams could be the next big industry after artificial intelligence. But it's also important to consider that although all the mentioned technological advances are promising, there are inherent limits to technology and our ability to interpret dreams accurately. Dreams are, in essence, subjective experiences that combine memories, emotions, and sensory perceptions. Even if we could record and decode dream images accurately, interpreting them would remain a challenge. Each individual has a unique set of associations and experiences that influence their dream content, which makes precise decoding and analysis extremely complex. Nah. So what do you think about all this? Would you like to be able to record your dreams and watch them when you wake up? Imagine the possibilities. Having a lucid dream, doing whatever you want in it, and then being able to share it with others. Or better yet, would you be willing to participate in a dream communication experiment? Tell me in the comments what you would do if you had access to this technology. See you in the next video, Knowledge Seekers.